So, ooh, that came up kind of quick. Um, hey, how you doing? I saw your new baby. She's cute. Chanel. Hey, y'all. So, today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Ugh. We're going to just store. Oh, yeah, they probably do feel real good, too. So, okay, y'all. So, today we're going to be doing our seafood boil, but it's going to be... Ooh, you crooked. It's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do... Is we're going to boil our potatoes. Yes, it's going to be done in the oven. We're going to boil our potatoes and our corn on the stove first for about 30, 30 minutes just to get them soft and almost done. Then we're going to put everything in this pan and we're going to season it with ranch dressing. And Louisiana, the Louisiana crawfish shrimp crab boil. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Robin. So, like I said, we're going to season it with the, the crab boil and the ranch. And we're going to pour, to help it steam wise in the oven, we're going to pour some chicken stock in there and some water. And uh, then we're going to make a sauce tonight, too. I'm going to go ahead and make the sauce. That's how I like to make my sauce. So we're going to make a butter sauce, and I got everything. And we're going to do it the right way also. So we have some small red potatoes. We have an onion. We have a piece of ginger. We have some minced garlic. We have two fresh, I mean, um, two cold water lobster tails. We have six, I think. Crab clusters, snow crab clusters. We have some Koneka sausage. We got our Italian dressing. We got some Worcestershire sauce. We got our jumbo shrimp. And we have our corn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give the potatoes a good rinse. You know, bring y'all over to the sink so y'all can see that she is rinsing the potatoes, honey. Um, and the corn. The corn has come out of the freezer. And uh, yeah, we pretty much don't give the uh, potatoes a good rinse after I get my hands washed, honey. And the water on the stove is already starting to boil. Um, so yeah, we're going to just rinse these potatoes. And they're really, really small, so they won't take long to cook. So while the potatoes and the corn are cooking, we're going to go ahead and get set up to make the butter sauce. So we're going to go ahead and just start placing these in the water. And these are really, really small, so they won't take long to cook. We're gonna go ahead and put our pieces of corn in. And we're not gonna add any seasoning in there. So when the potato when the corn get done, we're gonna slice it in half and then we're gonna put it into the pan. So <clears throat> I'm gonna grab a pot and we're gonna go ahead and get set up with our butter sauce. But before we do that, let me grab out which herbs we're gonna use. So we're gonna need some oregano, basil. Hey, honey. Um, some onion powder, a little bit of garlic powder, and uh, y'all. I probably should have picked up some more parsley from the store, but we ain't got all that, so we ain't gonna worry about it. We got the rest of our herbs, so we're gonna rock with that. So our corn and potatoes boiling on high. We're not going to turn the oven on yet, but what I'm going to do is grab a pot and we're going to go ahead and get started with our butter sauce. So 
I'm gonna bring y'all in close so y'all can see what's going on. Cause I got a lot of stuff on that cabinet over there. I mean that counter. Y'all, I cannot find, for some reason, I cannot find my vegetable peeler for the garlic. But I'm just going to go ahead and peel it. <laughs> Maybe it's over here in this drawer. ginger to give it a little bit of kick and this is a um the recipe is is mine's most of it but i took a few like ideas from um the lovely because she has a really good sauce recipe so i have to give her credit for that i ain't stealing nobody shine but um some uh, most of the stuff is what i use in my sauce anyway but i've just added a few things to it like the onion. Gar ginger's hard to peel. And it doesn't take a lot of ginger either, so. So how y'all been doing out there, YouTube? lot better y'all I'm feeling a lot 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 a lot better and that's why I'm back I took some time off um and I feel a lot better when I tell y'all I feel so much better I have and I got myself some vitamins so I started a whole vitamin regimen um where I'm basically taking vitamin C B12 Folic acid, cinnamon and chromium, um, fish oil, and hair, skin, and nail vitamins. So I'm trying to build my body up because y'all, I was so, so I was so tired of being sick. So I had to do something. Something had to give. So um, I feel a lot better, and I'm taking about five five hundred. Ooh, what'd you say, honey? I'm sorry. I missed you coming. I'm taking a lot of vitamin C. I'm about three a hundred a thousand milligrams or something like that, however you pronounce it. But um, I feel so much better since I've been getting all my vitamins. And um, yeah, being sick is not the business, y'all. And I feel so 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 much better. So be on the lookout for the videos this week. Cause it's going to get lit. So I wasn't able to do the um, strawberry shortcake, the strawberry, um, the strawberry video for Easter. I mean, for um, Valentine's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I keep missing the comments y'all. I'm sorry. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the strawberry shortcake, the one where you have the white and the little pink yogurt balls on it. I'm going to, um, do that cake for y'all this week because I know a lot of people have been asking for it. And I was going to do something similar but with a little bit of a twist on Valentine's. But I'm going to go ahead and do it this, um, Tuesday so you guys will see it either Wednesday or Thursday. I'm gonna save this piece of onion to go into the pot, the pan. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this blended. Our potatoes and corn are boiling. We got our ginger and um, our onion in there. Blend it down a little bit more. 
Hey y'all, we're gonna be on for a minute. So if y'all need to make a pit stop, do something, we're gonna be on here tonight for a little bit. Cause this is gonna take a little bit of time. So walk away, we'll come back. We don't go too far for too long. Thank you, Robin. I am glad you're feeling better. Me too. I got my. Yeah. Oh, hey, honey. Came across your channel. You did it. Seafood ball, my girl. Okay. Well, I'm glad y'all like the ball. Don't worry about Valentine's Day. Okay, I'm not going to worry about Valentine's Day. You're right. But we're going to get that video done. I'm going to go ahead and get that done since I have the strawberry cake mix. And I'm going to do some other stuff to show y'all how to take. Oh, I'm glad you like my personality. Hey! Uh, what, what was I about to say? So I'm still going to do the, the strawberry cake video, but we're going to do it with the little beads like the strawberry ice cream strawberry shortcake ice cream i'm gonna go ahead and do that video because i know that y'all wanted to see that Ooh, that still don't want to act right so what we're gonna do is we're going to take the butter and this butter is going to be for the sauce and we're going to use a stick and a half, honey. Well, no, I'm two sticks, two and a half sticks. Because I'm going to use some of the butter to go on the crab and the shrimp when I toss it. So I got to grab another stick of butter. But I'm going to go ahead and melt the butter down. And to be honest with y'all... This um, recipe is actually really flavorful. And that's why I like it. There's so many ways to do seafood boil. Well, you don't just have to submerge the seafood in water. And I don't think a lot of people know that. But there are plenty of ways to do seafood without having to submerge it in water. And this is one of the ways. And I'm about to show y'all. So we got our butter melting down. I'm going to turn the heat down on that because I don't want the butter to brown. Get the leaves off everything. Everything is everything. Y'all, it's going to be lit around here this week. So we're going to do the strawberry shortcake. We're going to also start on our Easter videos. We're going to do Easter bunny cupcakes with the peeps, honey. We're going to do our Greek food. We're going to do gyros. Um, what else are we going to do? We're going to do our salmon cake video. It's going to be a lot of videos. I'm trying to get the videos for this week and next week done. So it's going to be a whole bunch of craziness happening up in this house. But I'm excited because, you know, that's how I know that I'm 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 back um on schedule doing what I need to do. So I really did take this time to rest y'all and to get myself together. And um thank y'all for the support. You know, because y'all was all like you need to get you some rest, you need to take some time. And I really did that. I really didn't talk to a lot of people. I took my hair out, y'all, so if y'all don't follow me on like YouTube or Facebook, y'all y'all missed it. The girl put a picture up, no makeup, with my fro, honey. I had the whole fro out on Facebook and Instagram. So if y'all want to know, it's uh, Bama Girl Cafe on Instagram, and if it's YouTube, it's Octavia Bama Girl Millhouse. So, if you want to find me on Facebook. But, yeah, I had the whole 
Afro out. I had a picture of it. Everything. Everybody was like, girl. We, one of my cousins, she was like, bitch. I ain't seen your hair in so long. I didn't know your ass had no hair. Well, she was like, you got edges and all. And I was like, yes, I have edges. She was like, go team edges. But, um, yeah, a lot of times people are shocked when they don't see me in weave or anything that I actually have hair. Well, this bitch got hair, okay? But, um, about a year and a half ago, I had to shave the back of my head and on the sides. So, <laughs> I did have no hair for a minute. Yes, I love this channel, but I hate that they're not featuring any clipping channels on the BET Social. You know, I didn't even really get a chance to watch the BET Social Awards. So, I don't know who got what. Um, I know some influencers. Um... A lot of YouTube influencers got some awards on there. And, you know, maybe they just didn't see any channels that they wanted to put on there. But if you ask me if they want to give a YouTuber who's really been making strides um, that was, you know, a part of the community. Um, Soulful T would have been somebody I would have been happy to see win. So we're going to put that butter and ginger in. I mean, a ginger and... um onion into that and we're going to save this to go into the boil and that's going to be our dipping sauce this is the dipping sauce right here so we're going to need the garlic the italian dressing and the your sauce and we're going to use about a tablespoon of that in there And we're going to do about three shakes of Worcestershire sauce. And we're going to add the Italian seasoning. The reason I like the Italian... Oh, you love soul tea? Yeah, I love soulful tea. I'm going to use about one third of a cup of Italian seasoning in the uh, mix. I'm just going to eyeball it. Because the Italian seasoning really gives it a good taste, y'all. Um, I forgot the hot sauce, honey. Do I even have hot sauce around here? I know I had some. My nephew requested I have hot sauce all the time when he comes see me. Because y'all know Cameron eat hot sauce on everything. And we're going to add a little onion powder. Just a little. A little garlic powder. Some basil. Oregano. And we're going to let this start to simmer on low so everything can come together. And, um, yeah, we're going to just let it chill. So, um, yeah, soulful tea would have been... A good person to win that because I feel like she really puts a lot into her channel and um, she's really a sweetheart um, I like her on the t on the um, sofa sessions like she really takes a lot of time and puts a lot of effort into that I love to see I'm from Louisiana and we do seafood all the time so I'm excited to see how you do this well this is not like your regular seafood bowl um, this is going to be baked in the oven with all the seasoning on it. So the potato and the corn are actually boiling so that they can get al dente almost done. Because the crab, the crab is not going to take, the crab and the shrimp are going to take about 30 minutes tops to cook in the oven. So if you want your potatoes and your corn to be ready, you have to... Go ahead and um, boil them so that they can get ready. So we add some chicken stock into that sauce. 
And that's what the sauce is going to be like. I'm going to add a little bit more of the Worcester sauce in there. And there's so many different ways to make dipping sauce. The main component is the butter. That's what you really need. That's delicious. So we're going to let that boil. And I'm probably going to add a little bit more onion powder and garlic powder in there. And I'm going to check the potatoes to see how soft they are. Because they're really, really small. So the potatoes and stuff are almost done. We got our seafood. It's already been cleaned. Um, I'm going to leave everything in the shell as far as the shrimp. So these are the shrimp. We got jumbo shrimp. And these came off the coast of Georgia. So they're going to be real, real good. So let's talk about... Please put the recipe on the channel. Okay. We're doing a seafood boil in the oven. Instead of boiling it, we're going to put it in the oven, and wrap it in full. We're going to put everything in the pan and let it go. It's going to be really, really flavorful and really, really tasty. So I knew I forgot to put something in the sauce. And that's the oil, oil of bay seasoning. It's simmering on low. So we need to add that in there. And I need that for the bowl too. But yeah. So that's gonna be perfect. We're gonna just let that simmer and come together. The corn and potato need uh, about a good five, ten, five. I'm gonna say about, I'm gonna check it in five minutes, but I'm gonna let it go another ten minutes depending on how it's looking. So my oven is set. Can you? Use an oven bag instead of a aluminum bag. Yeah, you can use the oven bag, but you um, I'm not using the oven bag. I'm just going to use the foil because that's how my grandma used to do when she would do a whole bunch of shrimp and she didn't want to boil it, and she would do the crawfish like that too. Um, but what she would do, well, crawfish are complicated job because a lot of people get crawfish and they don't clean it, all, and you gotta clean crawfish. Uh, but if you're doing like the shrimp and the crab claw, you can definitely put them in a oven bag, a roasting bag, and put them in a pan and put them in the oven and let them go. That's a good way to do it too and it really tastes good. But you get more flavor when you do it in the oven because uh, everything kind of like sticks and it kind of like gets up under the skin and all that. So that's why it's real sexy and delicious. But um, yeah, I'm super, super excited to be doing this with y'all. I really miss y'all. Like, I did, but I know I needed that time off. And I was able to get a lot done. So, y'all know, I don't think I told y'all. Yeah, I really do feel funny too about it. So, let me explain it to y'all real quick. When you are, when you get crawfish, because we country, you know, you go into the bayou to get crawfish crawfish is a fresh water seafood okay and it is influenced among Cajuns and creoles um but yeah crawfish when you catch crawfish they call them mud bugs because they live in the swamps and <laughs> sometimes they bury their way up through the mud when they are on land so um you have to clean them and then you can't clean them when they dead you gotta clean them when they lie so what you do is you take water and you add salt to it and you submerge the crawfish in there and they regurgitate the mud. If you don't clean them, your food will taste muddy because once the water... Okay, so you know what I'm saying. Okay, so once you put them in hot water and you got seasoning and spice in there and before they die, they're going to regurgitate. And... That's disgusting because that's just mud. So, usually we rinse and salt water our crawfish 
depending on how dirty the water is or if you got to come up to a particular bayou a couple of times. So, my granny and them, we would do it about two to three times. Um, just depending on how much in there, you usually get like a big pool, like one of those kiddie pools. You fill it with some water out the hose and you pour some salt in there and then they kind of regurgitate and you do it two times. <laughs> yes, that's so once you do that uh, two or three times they're clean because when you just pour the water in there and they stick there the water is clear that's how you know your crawfish is clean a lot of people don't know how to clean crawfish so I don't go to everybody's seafood bowl or I eat crawfish and like they have fish houses in Mobile <clears throat> they clean them for you and you can tell if you get a frog crawfish that hasn't been cleaned because it has a really muddy taste yeah, everybody don't um everybody don't clean their crawfish right. And so I'd be scared as hell to eat crawfish. It'd be gritty. Yeah. So um you definitely have to clean clean the crawfish. Um yeah, and another thing people don't know. When crustacean like crawfish, when you cook them, they're alive. You eat a dead crawfish and you you'll know it. Your guts it's going to tell you. <laughs> but when you cook a crawfish from live to death, if you pull a crawfish, like say everybody got their crawfish out there on the table. If you get a crawfish, I hate all that peeling of those little bitty meat for that little bitty meat. Yeah, it is a little meat. It's really flavorful though. What was I saying? So, okay, I'm going to use this lobster for an example. Okay, so if you get a crawfish and it's cooked and it's stiff like that, that mean it is worth it though if you get a crawfish and it's stiff like this after you cooked it that mean it was dead on arrival so don't eat that when you cook crawfish from live to dead they curl up so I always remember that if you go to a restaurant or to somebody's house and you decide to eat crawfish if that motherfucker's straight and it's been cooked don't eat that if the tail is curved, then that means the crawfish died at the time of cooking, and it is safe to eat. Other than that, your damn stomach is going to hurt, okay? So you have to tell people when they've never eaten crawfish to look out for that because some people don't know that. So it's very important to know what you're eating um, when you're playing with the little, little mud devils. Girl, you got to get you some crawfish. You got to get you some crawfish. And um, we do a big crawfish boil, y'all. And as soon as... I'm actually looking into getting me a propane boiler, like a propane thing. Yes, you will. Yes, it's upon us. And I'm, I'm looking at getting me... If I don't get one, we have a friend who's from New Orleans she's gonna let us use it but I'm gonna have waiting for the price to go down oh that be so damn high but um you can go out and trap them yourself if you really know what you're doing um <laughs> trapping crawfish is not that bad <clears throat> you just gotta be patient it's really good y'all you guys definitely need to try it um but oh my god i love to get crawfish and then cook them clean them and cook them and make crawfish and souffle honey crawfish and souffle or i do some crawfish jambalaya with shrimp that shit is so delicious i don't even know why i'm talking about it because it just made my whole mouth water Honey, I'm from Mobile. I know people like people from Mobile. They don't realize like a lot of Mobilians have a heavy Creole influence. It's not something that people say in Mobile. <laughs> Go on Amazon, cause I got one of those. Ones. Okay, yeah, okay. I'm gonna have to check on Amazon. Um, so we have a heavy Creole and Cajun influence. I am a lot better, y'all. I've been on a plethora of vitamins and water y'all like i've really been trying to take care of myself um 
and I feel a lot, lot, lot better. What was I saying? So, people don't realize Mobile and New Orleans are considered actually sister cities because they were both founded by the same people. Mobile was actually the capital of French Louisiana. And um, the Vienville brothers, when they settled in Mobile, they settled upriver in the bayous and the swamps, but they had a problem with yellow fever and um, because of the mosquitoes and everything. So they came back down and they settled in the city of Mobile, which was the capital of French Louisiana. One of them decided that they wanted to go west and he founded New Orleans. Um, so Mobile is actually older than New Orleans. And um, a lot of people get offended when they say New Orleans is the originator of Mighty Gras. Now that I'm trying to knock New Orleans, they do Mighty Gras, <coughs> they do Mighty Gras different than us. It's um, Mobile Mighty Gras is more family friendly. New Orleans is like you want to have a good time. You, you, don't, you don't take your kids certain places in New Orleans. But in Mobile, it's really family oriented, and it's it's the it's uh, <laughs> Rashad Town. Your personality is awesome. Oh, uh, thanks, honey. So it's a big difference. Like this year, I didn't get to go to Fat Tuesday because I was trying to recuperate. Sorry, <laughs> I really missed that. I didn't get to go to Fat Tuesday, y'all. Y'all don't understand the struggle that I was feeling in my spirit, Rick. That I miss Fat Tuesday. But I didn't get to go to Fat Tuesday because I was trying to get better so that I could get back to work. But Fat Tuesday in New Orleans in Mobile is so different. And, um... Okay, so you have at Etouffee. Um, then you have Joe Kane Sunday. I don't know if they do Joe Kane Sunday. But Joe Kane is basically the person who revived Mardi Gras after the Civil War. Yes, it does. It do have fun, and it is a big deal. Um, but each city has its way of celebrating Mardi Gras. So I don't knock each city. Um, I enjoy it when I go either way. I feel like the culture of Mobile and New Orleans is the same. The cities are set up the same. The buildings look the same. It's all a French influence. So, you know, some people are like, Oh, New Orleans is better than Mobile. Mobile is better for New Orleans. Well, New Orleans is really for the grown and sexy, honey. You want to get your grown and sexy on. But if you want to do and have a good time with you and your girlfriends, then go down to New Orleans when you turn 21. <laughs> but if you want to take your family to Mardi Gras and really do the family thing and not worry about no titty popping out, then go to Mobile. <laughs> but, honey, I have had... Honey, I have been stone drunk downtown on New Orleans and flashed some people, honey, and got them beads, baby. <laughs> Y'all, we about to have a quick, quick story time. My husband is asleep, so I think I can get away with this one. I'm going to wake him up when I finish cooking. So, <laughs> when I turned 22, I went down to New Orleans with my boyfriend at the time, y'all. And, you know, when you're down on Bourbon Street, they have the bars that are open and everything. So, honey, they had hula hoop contests. And your girl didn't have no stomach. Again, you know, that's when I was wearing midriffs and belly chains and stuff like that, y'all know what I'm saying. Because I was a fine 20-something-year-old. I'm a fine 30-something-year-old. But, y'all, let me tell you. These motherfuckers got me on... Tape. This is when people were still using camcorders, okay? They got me on tape, y'all. I was cootie brown drunk, okay? Cootie brown drunk. You was pretty drunk. I was drunk, honey. I won the damn hula hoop contest, okay? Y'all, I had that damn hula hoop in the air on my hand, on my leg, around my neck. Honey, I had two hula hoops. I won the damn hula hoop contest. Baby, I'm telling y'all, I was so drunk. When they showed me that video two days later after I could feel my face from how drunk I got down there in New Orleans, I was so embarrassed, honey. But I had a good time. I had titties out and everything. <sighs> y'all, it was a travesty. I got the tape. 
And I looked at it a couple more times and then I snatched the ribbon out that bitch because I ain't never want my kids. You know, when I have kids, I don't never want them. I had them hurricanes. Yes, honey. I had more than a few. Because if you hit one of them hurricanes down there on Bourbon Street, your ass, after the first one, Yes. Honey, I was so drunk. I was too through, okay? I was through. I was so through. I was sitting on the curve. <laughs> I was sitting on the curve. Sit up. Sleep on the curve. And they got pictures of that shit, y'all. Y'all, let me tell you. And y'all know it's old because that's when they had the, the razor, the phone call, the razor. Honey. I was gone. When I tell y'all I was so gone, I was gone, okay? There's no, there's no other way to describe what was going on. I was done. I was so drunk. My boyfriend at the time was so mad at me. Oh, okay, your puppy didn't woke up. Y'all, she got the cutest little puppy. So we're going to cut the corn in half. And this is really hot. Woo! I lost a piece. That's okay. <clears throat> so basically, you're just cutting it in half. And it's really hard to cut in half, y'all. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to hold it this time. This is going to be the hard part, so if you got somebody who can do this for you, then definitely let them do it. Alright. So we're just cutting the corn in half. But yeah, y'all, I was too drunk. I was too through, y'all. Yeah, I had to get rid of that tape. Whew. Don't ever go down to New Orleans thinking that you're going to drink two or three of them hurricanes, honey. That hurricane gonna molly walk your ass upside the head. And then, let's not talk about what I had, the prelude to all the drinking on Bourbon Street. Because I grew up with my granddaddy, y'all. And uh, we used to have this stuff in the house called wild turkey. <laughs> you know, so, if you um ever hung around old people... You know, wild turkey is a, that turkey will make you cluck. You know, they have the Hennessy, the wild turkey, um, now they have the honey turkey, wild turkey, and it's really good. The honey, I had wild turkey before I took my ass down to Bourbon Street. And let me tell you, girl, I was bent. I was fucked up, in other words. Y'all, and I'm going to tell y'all that at that time, um, before my husband, the longest relationship I ever had was with this Bosnian guy. He was Bosnian. He was so, he was so mad at me, y'all. He was so mad at my black ass. <laughs> oh, y'all, I was so drunk. All I remember... It will definitely give you some... You're right, honey. Okay, I had a full-grown hair on my chest, okay? I had Al Bundy going on. Y'all, I had the worst alcohol shits and hangover. On our way, which New Orleans and Mobile is about an hour and 20 minute drive. For cold, hot times. <laughs> yes, honey. Wild turkey is that you got to be a real drinker to drink wild turkey, honey. And, um, honey, let me tell you. My ass felt it for days. I was so dehydrated. I couldn't drink water. I couldn't drink tea. I couldn't drink nothing but water and ginger ale. I couldn't hold nothing down. I had the alcohol shits completely. 
Ain't nothing worse than having alcohol. It's just because you feel like something crawled into your intestines and it's doing this. Like your intestines just wants to leave you, okay? Your intestines wants to say, fuck you. You special. Why did you do this? So, honey, I was, I didn't drink after that for about a good five months, y'all. I was ready to give up drinking. And let me tell you. That got the best of me, honey. So when I go down to New Orleans now, yes, honey, you ain't been drunk for real until you done had the alcohol shits. I don't care what nobody say. Them alcohol shits will make you contemplate your life, okay? Because you holding on to the toilet for dear life. <laughs> the toilet becomes your friend. And tissue, and tissue, honey, tissue is what you need, okay? You need baby wipes. Yes, LOL. You need baby wipes, okay? Because your ass is going to be messed up, okay? But yes, I took my behind down in New Orleans and got Coot Brown drunk. And y'all, I paid for it. I paid for it, honey. Yes, I did. So we're gonna put our seafood in the pan. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out the way. Woo! We got our shrimp. We got the heads cut off. They already been rinsed and everything. Our potato and corn is in there. I'm gonna angle this a little bit better so y'all can see what's going on. Can't get enough tissue for that. Yeah, you're right, honey. Because your ass be coughing, okay? Your your intestines let you know that you have royally fucked up. And um, you feel it in your bones. So we're going to take the rest of that onion and garlic. I mean, onion, not onion and garlic. The rest of the ginger and onion and put it in there. We're going to take some garlic. You want to get a good amount of garlic in there. You want to go ahead and put your oil bay on there, honey. Then you want to take, for the amount of seafood I have, you're going to need two packs of ranch seasoning. So, I have two pounds of crab, um, crab clusters, two pounds of shrimp, two, pound, two lobster tails. And you may only need one pack of the crawfish seasoning. And I got my I, I got my oven set at 380. We're gonna go ahead and get this open. And then after I get this open, I'm gonna chop my sausage up in there. We're gonna need just one pack of this. We're going to go ahead and take our butter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to melt. Okay, honey, you have a good night too. Blessings to you. Pray for us in church tomorrow. I'm going to go ahead and melt another stick of butter, y'all. Well, I got a half a stick on my belt. I'll put that in there. I'm going to go ahead and chop this onion up to go in here. Where's my knife? Uh, 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 uh. 
little bit of that onion went through my Alright, so what else we got to do? I'm going to wait for this little bit of butter to melt. We got our chicken stock. Grab our herbs. Because you're going to need some herbs. My mouth is watering yummy. Ooh. Now, my grandma would do it like this, but she wouldn't use the ranch dressing, but I stole that from somebody. And it was good when I tried it, honey, so I've been using it ever since. Come on, buttermilk down. So, while this is going, we're going to start to toss everything. Make sure you get all the pieces coated. Go to the bottom and just turn it. It's going to be delicious. I'll make sure you get every piece rubbed down. Get that butter. We're going to let that butter cool for a second. But yeah, make sure you just toss all the seafood and the potatoes and the corn in that mixture. And it's going to be so delicious, y'all. And then... Oop, I lost the potato, but that's okay. Let me be careful. But you can see, like, the seasoning is getting on every piece of it. And it's going to be so good. And then we're going to add that chicken stock in here. I mean, um, yeah, the stock. And we're going to add a little bit of water so it can steam. Make sure you get that lobster tail all seasoned. And this is going to be delicious. So that little bit of butter is melted. Uh -uh. Gonna grab a little bit of water. You don't wanna pour the water directly on the seafood. Not much, cause it doesn't take much to steam it. I'm gonna add, where's our chicken stock? Ooh. And now, we're going to wrap it with some fall. Where's my fall? And you want to make sure you wrap it really, really good. And I'm going to take a piece of iron across that part so that none of this thing gets out. My oven is set at 380. Real 
Yeah, I almost forgot to put the sauce in there. Whew. That's how you know you need to double check. See, I'm human just like everybody else. I would have been so mad if the sausage wouldn't have been in there. I looked over and saw the, comp the um, sausage just sitting on the counter. So I'm going to wrap these back up in a bag, and these are going to go in the freezer. All right. So let me chop these sausages up real quick. And I'm using the Koneka sausage. Woo! That man would have been like, so where the sausage is at? <laughs> I'm glad I realized what I did. I'm just going to throw them in there. Ooh, child. That's a hot mess. All right. They in there now, y'all. What nobody going to tell me? Girl, you didn't put the sausage in there. I be smelling that onion, that garlic, and that ranch. So that's probably why. Because my nose was talking to me. So I'm going to have to leave it in for a few more minutes. But there it is. It's in the oven now. So we can start the cleaning of the process. Whew. Let me grab a Ziploc bag, freezer bag. Y'all, I ain't washing no dishes by hand. Um, they going into the dishwasher. You know what I'm saying? We live in that dishwasher life around here because when I was growing up, I was the damn dishwasher. So that's how we live around here, fam. We live in that dishwasher life. How y'all liking the live shows? Because I'm going to be coming weekly to do live shows now. Because that's something I really wanted to incorporate into the channel. doing live shows I usually cook and clean as I go but when I'm doing live um, live cooking shows it's hard to do that Yeah, it's time to clean. Um, on days I do seafood, because I do a lot of seafood in my house, I usually um, try 
try to I, I always try to uh, keep everything wiped down because I don't like that seafood taste in the house. I mean, smell in the house. So that's always a big factor for me. And the reason I like doing it in the um, I like doing the seafood in the oven. It's because when I do a boil, I have to open all my windows and um, my house smells like seafood for two days, y'all. And I love seafood, but I don't like that smell in the house and I have to put lemon out and just trying to get everything wiped down. It's, it's a hassle. So that's why sometimes I do it um, in the oven. Because it doesn't have that smell of the boil all throughout the house. Because that smell can... That's... Oh, sorry, y'all. That smell is intrusive, honey. It's not your friend. It don't love you. It live here. It's a part of... Hey, honey. It's a part of your life situation. And um, she just ain't got time for that. So, <laughs> I usually um, do it this way. And I'll just get me a hot, soapy rag and just go around and wash the counters. Trust me, I'm going to be eating more seafood before this week is over. Um, at one point in my life, I, um, I would definitely say I identify as a Presbyterian because all I ate was seafood. And I'm not going to lie to y'all. Yeah, it do linger. I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I felt so good not eating meat. And um, to be honest with y'all, I've gone back to eating seafood about three or four times a week. And um, I just, I, I grew up eating seafood. We would catch it fresh. So eating seafood to me a lot is normal when you live on the coast. Like, fish is free. Fish is free. Okay, you pay for the bait, and it's free, y'all. So, it was a lot of times cheaper to feed a family of my size to go fish, to get to the fish market or go fishing. Because fish was so inexpensive. The only thing now is that um, you go to, like, you can go to more of the market now. You know, we always had a lot of markets around town. But usually what my grandparents would do, they would go down to the to the dock and get fresh seafood right out of the water. You get it early in the morning. And that's how we would get a lot of it. But we ate a lot of seafood. So, um, when we moved to Kansas, my diet changed. And I would tell you, I think that was the start of a lot of the health problems that I had. Because I was eating more red meat. I love pork. I've always ate a lot of pork. But we, we didn't eat as much, but I started eating more red meat. And um, that caused me to start having some health issues um, because of the amount of meat I was having. And I'm, I'm almost sure that. What people don't realize, a lot of people come from coastal areas. Seafood is a part of our daily, uh, our daily weekly intake. And um, it's cheaper. Um, well, I'm from Mobile, Alabama. So the part of town we call, we grew up in is called Down the Bay. And it's literally, you can walk from my granny's to my grandparents' house. You can walk a mile and be at the bay. Or be at Mobile at the river, downtown Mobile. So I grew up coastal. Um, I suffered from like a lot of mineral deficiencies like iron. Um, my hair broke off. That's why I had to shave my hair. My hair broke off because they don't get a lot of um, iron down in the air because we get a lot of fresh, fresh coastal air is really healthy. 
it's got the eye diamond and the salt so it just it you know it's a big difference when you've lived on the close coast or close or close to the coast all your life when you move too far inland you can start to have health issues and moving to kansas i had a lot of health issues i never had any vitamin deficiencies or anything that's what i tell people like when i moved to kansas it pretty it had pretty much a big hold on me my skin changed y'all i had flawless skin <laughs> Before I left South Carolina, because we weren't too close from the coast in Columbia. And then I lived in Fayetteville, so it's not so far inland. But, y'all, when I moved to Kansas, my face broke out. Um, my hair got really thin. It broke off. I just had a lot of problems. And my diet changed dramatically. Because even in Columbia, we ate seafood three, three, two, three, maybe four times a week. So yeah i'm really considering if not being a full presbyterian again parsley i'm pronouncing it wrong i'm really thinking about transitioning my diet to where i eat more seafood than like meat and stuff because i think it will be um long term it will be a lot healthy for me and oh thank you honey <laughs> Thanks, love. But, yeah, so it really, living out in Kansas really did um, have a harsh effect on my body, my skin. Like, my skin now, and I don't mind showing it, but I don't have as many hyperpigmentation spots as I had. It was, um, it was really bad. I live in, I'm back in Alabama. I'm up at Fort Rucker, so it's a little bit inland. I'm about an hour away from the coast. So, I've been doing a lot better. Um, but, yeah, my skin, like, I have some hyperpigmentation. As you guys can see, like, I really don't have any breakouts. Like, I haven't had a, a breakout um, in a long time. So, my skin is definitely getting back to normal. And you can just see, like, all the damage from all the breakouts. And, um... I know y'all gonna laugh at me, but um, for some reason, and my husband was laughing at me, I'm not an army brat. Um, my stepmom was in the military, but we I didn't live, I grew up with my grandparents after my mom died. I'm not an army brat, but I am an army wife. <laughs> but I still am a brat. I was definitely a brat. I was definitely a granddaddy's girl because my daddy ain't shit. So my grandparents raised me. Even when my mom was alive, me and my grandfather had a really close relationship. Um, but yeah, I'm daddy's girl, honey. I mean, I'm sure y'all can look at me and probably tell that. But no, I'm not a military brat. I actually did not want to date anybody in the military. When I moved to Fayetteville, I didn't like military men. But my options were limited. <laughs> Because everybody's in the military or they're in college or they're like contractors. So, um, I didn't really, I wasn't really into military guys. How I ended up marrying one, that's a long story. But, um, I wouldn't date military guys. So, um, yeah, that just wasn't my thing. So, everybody was shocked when I told them I was getting married. For one, they were shocked when I told them I was getting married. And they almost passed out. Some people have heart palpitations when they hurt you in the military. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I was not chasing soldiers. You have a lot of women who do chase soldiers. No shade. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I was, I didn't want to be a soldier's wife. But, you know, sometimes what you don't want is what you get. But, um, it's a different type of lifestyle. I'll tell people, if you think, about uh, being married to a soldier is all glitz and glamour. <sighs> the only time it's glitz and glamour, honey, is when it's time to go to the ball. Other than that, it's not. It's a lot of compromise. It's a lot of... My grandparents raised me, so I have a southern upbringing. My parents and grandparents were born and raised in... I'm in Texas. Okay, so yeah, you're southern, honey. You are a southern belle. Um, but yeah, so, um, Seattle is beautiful. I always see pictures of Seattle, but I, I want to go, you know, 
And I hear they have really good seafood. And Pacific seafood is really good anyway. So I'm definitely trying to get there. Um, but yeah, it's not easy. Um, holidays, birthdays, they go to the field. But this job, he's not out in the field. But the deployments, um, the stress. It, uh, uh, being in the military is really stressful. And, um, they don't teach, they don't teach you how to be, there's nobody, there are people to teach you how to be a soldier, but there's nobody to teach you how to be a military spouse. So you kind of have to learn as you go. And, um, the moving, <laughs> um, not being able to find gainful employment. If you don't have a, if you're a military spouse and you don't have a skill that is needed in the local area or on post, it's really hard to find work. So, I always tell the young wives who get married fresh out of high school, get a skill at your first duty station that is useful that you can take somewhere else. Um, and those are going to be like type of clerical type jobs. You can get something, um, PowerPoint, those type of jobs, which now I can do that kind of stuff. Anything in the medical field, like if you want to be a lab tech, um, what else? Pharmacy tech, those type of jobs, if you want to go to school for nursing, um, get your associates, because sometimes you might have to transfer, you might not be able to, unless you're going to be willing to stay behind and finish your clinicals, um, nursing, anything in the medical field, teaching, clerical, um, social work, those type of jobs, those type of wives tend to do better in the military because they can go from place to place and they always have a garrison. They always have MRI, MRI uh, ACS. They, those type of jobs are very plentiful. But a chef, unless we go to a base that has like a, a high-end type of like catering system, there's no jobs. Like if we would have went to Fort Bragg, I would have did fine because they got officer club, they got NCO club. We don't have none of that here, y'all. <laughs> so it's they have like bars and restaurants. But like we have, we have the landing here. And then we have Mother Rucker, and we have a couple other places, but it's, I wouldn't be making good money. Like, I would be making nickels, and it would take away from doing YouTube because the hours would still be long, but I wouldn't be getting paid my work. And I'm at that point in my life where I'm not trying to sound bougie, uh, like, uh, like, I'm too good to do certain job. But I'm at that point in my life to where I can build my own brand. I can build myself. So I'm not going to, especially if I'm able to stay home and build something for myself that I can take with me long term, then I'm not going to go and be on somebody's job and be mistreated <laughs> um, and have somebody telling me what to do. And I know I have more skills than them. And that was, that's been an issue too. Um, because I cook at home and y'all see me and I get really technical sometimes. But if I was to go into like the restaurants here, they couldn't, they wouldn't utilize the skills I have. And it would be a disservice to myself because I really wouldn't be practicing what I love and what I want to do. So that's why I really um, decided not to take jobs in the kitchens around here. Now I have looked at restaurants and bakeries outside, but they don't really have any bakeries and the bakeries they do have around here are mom and pop bakeries so they can't really afford to pay me my skill set and I'm not gonna go and slave in a kitchen in a bakery at two o'clock three o'clock in the morning for seven you know seven eighty or nine dollars an hour they can't afford to pay me twelve or thirteen dollars which even then that's still on the low end for the skill set that I have so, and the amount that I can produce, I can produce mass, uh, mass baker. I'm like a mass baker. So, um, my, my original training is in bread. So I can mass produce large amount of bread goods like loaf bread, yeast rolls, uh, what else, uh, baguettes. I, that's what I that's my thing and um, some cake decorating like I'm not like a, a spiffy spiffy cake decorator I have the basic skills but I'm I mass-produce bake so I, I would 
you know, they can't really use me. A mom and pop bakery doesn't need a person like me because they they don't need somebody who can bake <laughs> 300 cupcakes, you know. They don't need somebody who can bake 150 cupcakes unless they have that type of order. And that's what it is, you know. So, I have a particular skill that is needed in, like, maybe in a restaurant, like a high-end restaurant, where they want small, like, they want small bakery, and small baked goods, stuff like that. Like, specific, like, creme brulee, um, chocolate tarts, and stuff like that. Those things are mass produced and then they're frozen. So that's why I would work in a high end restaurant or a high end, high, high end, high traffic bakery. That's what I would need. And the bakeries around here just aren't like that. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock them, but I went to this, I went to this cupcake place here, y'all. <laughs> and they're using box mix. And I don't like working for places like that, and it's nothing against them, but I just believe that you shouldn't cheat your customers. If your customers are coming in there, and you're telling them that this stuff is made from scratch, and and um, that nothing's coming out of a box, and you're selling them a cupcake for $3.50, you lying to your customer. You cheating your customer, you lying to them, and that's bad business, so... I knew I couldn't take a job there because that goes against everything that I've learned and everything that the cooking industry is about for me. I have a food ethic problem and people don't realize when you go to culinary school, you do take an oath um, to never do harm to anybody and to always be fair with your clientele. So I've never ever sacrificed that when I worked somewhere. If I didn't like the way something was being done at a restaurant where it was food quality, pricing because uh, some restaurants price gouge i really usually didn't stick around because i don't need that on my resume <laughs> i don't want to be associated with that and it's just the ethics thing you know you know good ethics is like uh what do you do when people are not looking and that's what a lot of people struggle with in the culinary industry so i've decided to stick it out here on youtube you know i'm fortunate to where my husband allows me to be at home and I can build my own client because I have my own clientele now y'all so um, it really has worked out for me I have I have no complaint God is working everything out I have everything I need and things are happening things y'all don't see but y'all will see but yeah it's just been it's just been really weird not um, being able to find a job in my field I mean and um, a lot of times people don't want to pay me. Like, they want me to come work for them, but they want to pay me peanuts. And uh, I'm not that desperate. Now, if it was a situation to where I had to do it, then I would definitely do it. But I'm trying to build my own brand. And I am an entrepreneur. Can I ship you a German chocolate cake? Um, a German chocolate cake... It would have to be like 24 hours and the cost of the cake would probably be like $40, 35 to $40 depending on, depending on what size the cake is. And I would have to have special containers because you don't want the cake to shift. So I'd have to put dowels in it and it would have to be packed into um i would have to order plastic containers see this is what i want to be able to ship in um you know in the 50 states but i have to work on packaging and that is something let's do it girl that is a pound cake is easy to ship like i've shipped pound cakes all over this country i've shipped you order any of my cakes i have shipped many pound cakes <laughs> Mini pound cakes to Kuwait, honey, Afghanistan. So I have shipped pound cakes, mini pound cakes, and really easy cakes that are not really elaborate, that don't have a whole lot of decoration. I have shipped them before, and they do ship with layer cakes. You just have to put a dial in them. You have to put them in a container and put, like, those little ice packs around them so that the icing don't melt. And you got to just really put them together real good, but it is possible. Rum cake can probably be shipped. 
but I'm I'm not at first of all I have to order the containers and then I have to make sure ooh y'all I gotta put she on the charger um you have to make sure that you have the right shipping and hey Eric um thanks honey you have to make sure that you have the right amount of shipping because the thing with cakes are is that they're not like homemade tea cakes are easy to ship you know that kind of stuff is easy to ship cookies now i have done i have done cookies brownies praline fudge that kind of stuff i can ship um it's really easy it's uh, cookies and um, brownies, praline, fudge. I can ship that in like a $5 box. You know, those flat rate boxes. But a cake, I wouldn't be able to. So, I have to figure out how I can ship it. What about the homemade pecan cake? The, that can be shipped because it's not a lot of icing on it. But as far as like putting all the decoration on it. I would. I don't know how that would ship. I've been thinking about. I need a seven up pound cake and a rum cake. <laughs> okay, you gonna have to. You gonna have to find me on my email and email me. Um, but the shipping is so expensive to ship. Twin like a, a pound cake, a rum, and the pound cakes and the rum cake. Just putting them on the cake sheet on a um one of those round cake things and um. Wrapping them really good in saran wrap and putting it in a tight box and putting some like paper around it will ship fine. Um, it's the icing cakes that I'm not sure of how to ship, but I have been playing around with it, and I'm actually in a couple of months supposed to do a test run, <laughs> do a test run with my my friend um, in Jersey or one of my family members in New York to see how I can ship. What's the best way to ship the icing cakes? But people do do it, but Y'all have to think, like, if I start this, I have to make sure that it's controlled and it's quality. Because I'm one person and I'm a brand. So, if I do something like this, I have to do it the right way. Because I don't want people coming for my life, honey. Talking about my cake was broke. Da, 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 da. And then y'all got to understand, trying to ship a cake 24 hours from the time you make it, getting it shipped is expensive. Most cakes you can get away with three-day travel so the price go down if you can do the three day three day it's fine um it's fine but like if you want a pound cake the best way if you want a bunt cake like the brown cake it's gonna be a little hard to ship that i could just get a slice <laughs> yes baby you can get a slice but if you want pound cakes i can do them in the pound cake loaves and saran wrap them real good and ship those it won't be all pretty like the bunt cake, you know, like in the bunt pan, but you can't do them like that. But it's it's just um it's a lot of work that go into it. And I don't want to um damage my brand cuz uh y'all know the trolls. The trolls is real, honey. They are real. <laughs> they are real, honey. You know, I was talking to my husband about that like, "Oh my god, let me check this y'all." They are real. They will come for your life. I think it might actually be done. Let me open it up and see. Ooh, that steam, honey. Okay. Need a few more minutes. give it about a good 10 more minutes but um it's uh it's um it's really crazy but i have been thinking about it <clears throat> like how to ship it i'm doing fine y'all let me tell y'all about this cup so Dickies barbecue. If you're looking for chain barbecue, 
They got the best fucking barbecue. They have them. I've seen them all the way up to Virginia. But if you looking for some good barbecue, y'all, I keep they let you keep the cup. They give you a good cup. My picture is not clear. It might be my Wi-Fi. Let me slide back this way. What about now? Am I coming in clear now, y'all? Um, Dickies has the best barbecue. Am I? What about? Okay, so I see what y'all saying. It's the light over the sink. It's giving off a glare. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Is that a lot better? That looks a lot better on the screen. It was that that light is really beaming. Um, I have to have these light bulbs in this part replaced. Okay. Um, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm like okay, cause I I can't see. I I didn't see the reflection of it. But um yeah, Dickie's barbecue is really delicious, y'all. So if you ever get a chance to get some of their barbecue, they have a uh a brisket sandwich. That shit is so good. Oof. They have the best barbecue. They got good beans, like the green beans. With the potatoes in it. They got good barbecue beans. You need to check that restaurant out, y'all. Because I can eat that shit every day. If I'm not barbecuing myself. So, what else has been going on? I'm about to order me a flat top grill. Um, Because we're going to be grilling this spring, honey. So I'm going to order me a flat top grill. And the reason I'm ordering the flat top grill is because I feel like it'll be easier to do videos outside on the patio. So, I'm ordering me a flat top grill. I'm going to also look into getting a, bo uh, a boiler. I think they have, the, somebody just said they have some on Amazon. 120 um, quarts or something like that. I'm going to look for it on Amazon. And, um... It's all, I think it's my Wi-Fi, y'all. Or it's just the background. I'm on my phone. So that's what it is. Let me see if I can get myself in a better position. I'm going to turn that. I think it looks cloudy because it's so dark in here. I'm going to turn this light on. And then I'm going to stand like this. In this direction. Is that better? I think my phone camera, my screen. Okay. But, um, I'm gonna turn this light a little bit in that way. Alright. So, yeah. I'm ordering me a flat top grill off of Amazon. I found one that I like. What else? Um, I'm also looking at a charcoal grill. I wanted a gas grill. I thought I wanted a grass grill, but I want a charcoal grill. Because it's something about that charcoal and wood. It's not a crispy picture. Let me see what my... Okay, y'all. So, I think it's my internet. That's what's going on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. That's better. Okay. So, yeah. We got a lot of devices. We actually going to upgrade the internet because I have... My computer, I have another computer, I have a tablet. The my favorite is charcoal. Oh, yeah, I love charcoal and and um, the wood. So, I don't really think I'm going to be getting a gas grill, but I found some charcoal grills that are made by charcoal and they're cast iron and they're like really expensive. Some of the grills cost more than a gas grill, y'all. I am not fucking playing. I was so shocked today when I went to um, Home Depot. Okay, I'm glad y'all can see me better. So, I was really shocked when I went to Home Depot today. And I saw how much the, <laughs> how much the grills are. So, y'all, I went to Home Depot because y'all know I'm trying to get my beauty room together because I am going to start doing some beauty videos and some of those type of reviews because that's something I love to do too. And I just want a nice area in the house, like my office to be nice. So, y'all, I showed y'all a couple weeks ago, like, the furniture that I found and the pieces. Talked about some of the pieces in my mind. So, I went to look for some sandpaper so that I can sand everything. Let 
What kind of stand mixer you got? Okay, so I'm about to break your heart, honey. Why? 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 The type of stand mixer I have is a better home and garden. For some reason, they stopped selling the mixer at Walmart. And they were selling <clears throat> selling like hotcakes. The motor in that damn better home and garden mixer is stronger than a kitchen aid. I know people say kitchen aid is the top. And it is the top tier um, for stand mixers. Some men used to have really good mixers, but I think the quality of their mixers are not as good as they used to be. Um, they they just a little bit weak as far as the engine. So I don't I don't know about some men. All hell sucks. <laughs> but um, they stopped selling that mixer over five years ago. And I've had it for seven years. <sighs> yeah, I've had it for seven years. Almost eight years. And they stopped selling like five years ago. Five or six years ago. So they didn't sell them very long. But you can't find replacement parts. Um, and they just don't make them no more. But they have a... No, I only pay $80 for the damn thing, y'all. I pay $80 for that mixer. And I've used KitchenAid mixers before. Like, my friend had a KitchenAid mixer. And I was like, girl, your mixer is trash, honey. <laughs> and then she used my mixer. She was like, bitch, I'll trade you. I was like, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. That mixer, y'all, that mixer, yes. It was that cheap. It was that cheap. I am not lying. That better home and garden mixer was 80 bones when I bought it. I'm not lying. I ain't never going to forget that. Because I was looking at that and I was in Walmart. I was like, do I want to get this one or do I want the kitchen egg? That kitchen egg was 200 and some dollars, honey. And I didn't have any kind of coins. So I went with that one because it looked sturdy. It was pretty. It was aesthetically pleasing. And when I tried to lift it out of the shelf, it was a lot heavier. Heavier. So, that's how I ended up with that. No. Um, it's never went out. It's never went out. It's been dropped. It's been moved from Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina, Kansas, back to Alabama, uh, Georgia. It's the men everywhere, but... Yeah, I, I definitely understand. But now they have a, um, Walmart has a new brand stand mixer that's in there. But I don't need it. And I don't, I've been thinking about trying it out. How many watts? I don't even know how many watts it is. But honey. I pay an arm and a leg for my kitchen aid. Yeah, you do. They do cost an arm and a leg, even the small ones. And don't get into the big ones, honey. The, I don't know what it is about the ones that you buy in the store. I tell people, like, sometimes in the store, I don't know what kitchen aid mixes, why they don't hold up good. But I have had friends to order theirs directly from kitchen aid, and they order the big one, and they do just fine. But sometimes I don't know if it's like because they do something to them doing shipping. I, I don't know. I just know that that shit whip up quick. It's sound like a baby car engine. But it's really smooth. I, I can't honestly tell you what it is. Let me look at it. Yeah, so if you get a kitchen at 220 to 2000 yeah, I think the high, the more you pay for them, the better performing they are. 
So we can go ahead and get this out of the oven. Aids can be really expensive, but if you buy a higher end one, you definitely will not be disappointed. It's done. Let me wash my hands real quick. So the seafood bowl, what's all in there? It is a combination of Louisiana crawfish and shrimp boil, crab boil. It's ranch dressing seasoning, butter, um, basil, parsley, cilantro. That's my sister calling. And um, she wants to be trifling. But it is really good, y'all. It's delicious. Let me get a little plate. I'm going to taste a couple pieces. so delicious with that ranch seasoning and um oh my god y'all that's really delicious it just tastes really good and um you don't lose you don't use lose the flavor of the bowl of the seasoning that's why i like baking it too that is really good Mm. that's ready to go so what I'm gonna do y'all do y'all want me to do do y'all want me to do a mug bang um I hear the Hamilton Beach is a good mixer I've never tried it I don't know anybody personally who's tried it either I'm going to just dip that in that butter sauce. Ooh, ooh. I'm just trying it out, y'all. See what's going on. That's delicious. Ooh. All right, y'all. So we done. My phone is going dead. That where's that other piece of potato at, Lord? Lord Jesus. Mm. My husband gonna fight me. So <laughs> yes, the devil is a lie. This is so good, y'all. Let me get me a piece of sausage. Mm. 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 Mm, mm, mm. Mm. That is so damn good, y'all. Mm, mm, mm. Jesus. Yeah, they do make good products. Now, some being used to have... Mommy, me some of that, too. <laughs> Honey, you wouldn't want to open that after a couple days in the mail. Now, 
if you guys <laughs> if you guys are looking for seafood and you don't live coastal they actually have a place i'm gonna show y'all this lobster Ooh, honey look at that lobster look at the crab clusters oh my goodness that is so delicious um Mm. Let me not go back in that pot because I just stuck my finger in my mouth. Mm. Shit. Um, woo, that is delicious. I lost my train of thought. If you guys are looking for fresh seafood and you want to order coastal seafood, I can't remember the name of the place, but I actually used them when I was living out in Kansas. Um, I can't think straight smelling this food, y'all. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. It's actually a place in Pensacola, Florida that will mail you your seafood. And, um, they send fresh seafood. Like, they will send you blue shell crab, crab claws, clusters, shrimp, fish. And what I will do is I will get the name of it. And you can go online and you can actually order seafood throughout the country from this location. They freeze it, catch it fresh and freeze it, and you have it like in 48 hours. Okay. Y'all see that chicken stock and that butter in there? That's what's giving it that good flavor. Close up. Okay. Y'all see it. Y'all see that juice? She got the juice. 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 I'm going to stop playing. <laughs> but, um. <laughs> Woo. Chat. Let me let the phone charge. Good job. Thanks. I'm um I am I'm not gonna be able to do a live mugging with this y'all because my phone about to go dead. So what I'm gonna do if y'all want me to do a mugbang, let me know now and I can record it on my camera and upload it in the morning. So do y'all want me to do a mugbang? It does it looks great, it is great. Um, I am going to do Sunday night dinner. We're going to have a whole ass chicken, y'all. <laughs> We're going to have whole chicken, sweet potatoes, green beans, and I don't know what the other side is going to be, but we're going to have that tomorrow. So we are going to go live tomorrow, but if you guys want to see a mukbang, me record a mukbang eating this, let me know. I mean, I have a few of them up already. But I don't, I'm not going to be able to go live because even with my phone being on the charger, it's at 3% right now. We can wait until tomorrow. Okay. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed the live cooking show. You guys, um, maybe I should have told y'all, but um, we are going to be having a live cooking show once a week. Uh, and I'm going to try to get it scheduled, but sometimes I'm going to be able to and I'm going to pop up. But on the days that I do live cooking shows, it will be after 6 o'clock or after 7. So, yeah. I've been enjoying, I've been enjoying the live cooking shows. I hope y'all have. This is going to be a stable part of the channel. Um, and the regular cooking tutorials and the live mug bangs. I want to get into the going out eating live mug bangs. So, y'all be on the lookout for that. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm just happy that I'm feeling better. I taking my, I'm taking a plethora of vitamins, y'all. Um, and I've gotten a lot of rest, so I'm ready to get back to work, y'all. So we're going to have Greek food. We're going to have our gyros. I already got my flatbread for that. Um, we're going to do the cucumber, um, the cucumber salad. You love my live cooking shows? Oh, thanks, honey. I love y'all. We love the live. Okay. See, I don't mind going live. 
I ain't gonna be looking like I look on the regular show though, unless I've had somewhere to go. Cause I actually don't wear makeup every day, y'all. <laughs> and um, I don't think it's healthy to wear makeup every day. Um, and I'm really big on skincare. Cause y'all know, <sighs> I'll be 34 in October. And um, I don't wanna age my skin. So I've really been trying to take care of my skin. Y'all, I've been using <laughs> I've been using sunscreen left and right. And I'm gonna tell y'all, for some reason, I thought that my skin was a lot darker. I didn't realize I was a light-skinned black woman. And I know that's crazy. <laughs> um and um I really have to be careful with sun because I don't want to get sun damaged. And I don't know for some I think what it is is that I'm obsessed with dark skin. <laughs> and I think that dark skin is very beautiful. And the only reason I think I'm that way is because I miss my mom, y'all. My mom was very dark. She was very dark skinned. <sighs> no one uses makeup. Every you have some people out there who use makeup every day, but I'm just not that girl. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I'm a. I, I love dark skin. My mom was very dark skinned, and I miss my mom a lot, y'all. And um, for some reason, you know, it never dawned on me that I'm a lot lighter. And um, I really have to take care of my skin. And if if and when y'all see my aunts, <laughs> them half was in their 50s and their 60s and their 70s. And they look every bit of their late or uh, mid-30s. So I don't want to age. And a lot of people tell me I don't look 33 I don't want to look 33 or 34. I'm happy to get to that great age. So I'm really trying to, yeah, we have really good genes. <laughs> uh, so I'm really trying to take better care of my skin and get it cleared up. Um, a lot of people don't believe me, but y'all, I'm really 33 going on 34. And um, sometimes people think my husband will rob the cradle. They be like, you got a young wife. <laughs> He's like, that hell ain't young, that old chicken. <laughs> She ain't no spring chicken, but I'm 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 younger than him. <laughs> um, but oh, 